Assassin's Creed Odyssey is exactly that, an odyssey. Like the epic by Homer where the name originates from, the world of Odyssey is set in Greece, taking you on an epic journey during the Peloponnesian War. With an open world that can easily rival some of the best games in the genre, and a story driven by choice that feels more like a Mass Effect game than Andromeda ever will be, Assassin's Creed Odyssey is by far one of the best games in the series. For the first time ever in the series, you can choose to either play as a male or a female, Alexios or Cassandra, both being descendants of Spartan King Leonidas I. Both are basically the same character, though I found Cassandra to be a much more endearing character to play as. I found her voice actress to convey emotions much better than Alexios, plus just playing as her sort of felt like a pseudo Wonder Woman game of sorts. These two orphans turned mercenary when they were adopted into Marco's family. Marcos is a lovable fool of a father figure that you can tell loves you, but his choices in life constantly get him and yourself into trouble. He's that one figure in your family that you can't help but deal with just because he is your family. Odyssey's story is heavily grounded in choice and that ultimately depends on the type of character you want your protagonist to be. You can choose to be a brute with Marcos despite knowing he means well, or follow your moral compass and understand that family is still family. These choices are constantly presented in both the main story and in side quests throughout the game. However, not every choice will have a major impact in the story, some will just shape the character that you are. Like a My Hero Academia Season 3 opening, you too can keep your ideals. When choices do impact the story, they'll be marked with the symbol to hint that a certain choice could lead to repercussions in the future. This can be anything from an avoidable fight to a character dying that could have survived until one of the nine endings of the game. In these moments, Odyssey feels like one of the best stories in the series, almost like an alternate universe Mass Effect game. These choices open up new side quests around the world for you to go on, further opening up the lore and the type of character you want to be. I found this narrative structure to be heavily compelling, especially when serious moments made picking the moral choice a difficult one. It constantly blurred the lines between what was the right thing to do and what was the best thing to do. These were my favorite instances that brought back the feelings I felt during the tense ending of The Walking Dead Season 1. My main complaints with the story were the sections where 10% of the time I was playing as Layla, the modern day protagonist of Assassin's Creed Origins. Anytime she was on screen, I was just eager to jump back into the past. Luckily, her screen time isn't that major and didn't ruin the immersion into what Odyssey was really about. The twists and turns of the story, the major character reveals, they all managed to still deliver. When you first start Odyssey, you're given the choice to either play in the traditional mode with waypoints and objectives, or the exploration route, something new for the series. This is how the developers meant the game to be played. Jumping into a large open world with just your wits and navigation to figure out where the next story objective is. Admittedly, it would get you to explore the world more, though at the cost of adding on a few more hours to the campaign, too. For some people, that's fine. They want to get lost in the world and explore it to their heart's content. For others, they just want to experience the story without all the padding. Ultimately, that's why the choice is left up to you. Regardless, Odyssey's world is massive, and I mean truly gigantic. It'll take you across multiple terrains that send you through some of the most colorful backdrops of the series. It further made me want to explore the world not just because it's big, but because it looked beautiful and fun to explore. Combat for this new entry follows the base that was established with Assassin's Creed Origins. Attacks switch off between fast-paced, light, and heavy attacks, although the battle system can be customized. Using different types of weapons like axes, bows, or swords, you can switch up the fighting style of your mercenary. Fighting enemies, completing main missions, side quests, and while just discovering new areas are just some of the ways you'll gain XP that'll level up your character. As you begin to level up, you'll unlock ability points that can then be reinvested into your three-part skill tree. Depending on where you invest your points, you can designate the type of warrior you're going to become. One that focuses on stealth combat with long-range attacks like archery skills, or perhaps one that just focuses on brute force. I personally prefer to go the brute force route with melee attacks, but at times often find myself sneaking in some elements of stealth here and there. Add on top of this the clothing and accessories your characters can wear to further increase their stats, and you essentially feel like you're sculpting out the perfect warrior. It's a lot of fun. A pretty cool feature was actually being able to buff up weak accessories with materials you've gathered throughout the game, so you can continuously use old weapons even later on in the game. Now explorations and battles are just some of the basic foundations of Odyssey's gameplay, but there's so much to do in this world. Naval battles return re-invoking the feeling of cross-ship battles from Black Flag. Controlling these ships felt smooth and sparked this adrenaline rush in me any time I'm faced with an enemy blockade. Like the mercenary you're building up, your ship has its own development tree for you to buff up. It almost feels like having a second character under your management belt. A few hours into the game, you'll also get access to territory battles. These are large-scale battles where you'll complete missions to basically take over a piece of land. Your main objective is to take out the leader of said land by doing smaller things like taking out their soldiers that then weaken their defense force. 
These sections were entertaining, feeling like a game of chess, having to think of the most productive way to take out the target. However, this would then lead to large-scale battles of armies where you're fighting grunts and more important captains. This, on the contrary, felt more chaotic and less enjoyable than the lead-up to it. Outside of these larger-scale missions, you can find more minute types of missions. If you're stealing from people or just beating up soldiers, you'll find a bounty on your head. Just walking around the environment, sometimes related quests will appear as they're generated by the game to be relevant to what you're looking for or where you are. Wherever you look, there's always something to do. It goes in line with the level gating for story missions, something that's brought back from Assassin's Creed Origins. If you continuously try to work in a side mission or just explore the world, you'll find the level gating of the story missions to keep the game feeling challenging. You'll always either be right at the level or right under the recommended level for a mission. However, if you choose to just go from story to story quest, you'll quickly find yourself stumped in what feels like padding between the story objectives. In a way, the vast amount of things you can do can both make the game feel vast and alive, but also at the cost of occasionally coming off as story padding too. It's a 60 hour campaign that can easily still become a 100 hour campaign. Assassin's Creed Odyssey looks like a beautiful picture that at times looks like it was ran through a sharp effect filter. In most exposed and saturated parts of the game, Greece looks absolutely jaw-dropping. The beauty all around me captivated as I sailed my navy ship or just rode my horse through the villages. Like I said before, it's a world that skill is only better complemented by the attention to art in every part of the world. However, there are parts in this world where the contrast and the sharpness can get a bit heavy, making the picture look like an overly processed image. Those instances became more prominent at the start of the game, but as I started to explore more of the world, it became a thing of the past. What really stood out to me continuously was the animation of the character models. When in conversations, characters look fantastic, especially when the lines aren't being spoken, but you're still able to interpret the emotions the characters are feeling. But like most Assassin's Creed games so far, this entry isn't without any bugs. I ran into loot that I can't pick up, texture issues that completely just make the game look silly, and gravitational physics that just are mind-boggling. While they certainly hurt my immersion levels at times, they weren't bad enough for me to stop playing. They were more visual blemishes rather than gameplay ones. As for performance, it really varies across the board. Playing on the Xbox One or PS4, I found the frames to hover somewhere in the 30 to mid 20 frames per second mark, even on the enhanced consoles with better hardware and higher resolutions. Resolutions are 1080p on the standard consoles and 4K on the Xbox One X. Sadly, there isn't a performance mode that prioritizes frame rate over resolution, so you're pretty much stuck at that target 30 frames per second if you are on console. For PC, you'll want to look at something at least on par with the Nvidia 10 series cards if you're even thinking of trying to get 1080p 60 performance. They said the Cyclops put a big bounty on you. Talos the Stonefist wants you dead. Talos, the mercenary. Oh, am I ever not in trouble? Remarkable woman, but I see the burden you carry on your shoulders. Finding you has lessened it, I think. I hinted onto this earlier in the review, but for the most part, Assassin's Creed Odyssey's voice cast does some pretty great work with their performance. The duo protagonists are the standouts with Cassandra's voice actress really taking the limelight throughout the story. The rest of the NPC cast ranges from mediocre to pretty good, pretty much on par with Assassin's Creed Origins. The same can be said with the music and sound effects. The music in the game found the perfect cues to come in while exploring the open world. Likewise, the ambient sound of the world really sells how immersive and how big the world feels at times. Assassin's Creed Odyssey propels the series forward once again just how Origins did last year. What particularly stood out to me more this time was how much more riveting the story was not only in what was told, but how it was told. The focus on choice and decisions really made Odyssey's story much better executed. If anything, I think this further proved to me that this series can completely be a standalone anthology series that dives into the past without any of the modern day storyline ties. The gameplay felt like an evolution of Origins formula, although on a grander scale with the larger playground to explore. Sadly, the bugs that the series is known for are still present with this entry, but they luckily don't ruin the experience as a whole. To me, Origins and now Odyssey go to show that the teams behind the series are bringing new life to Assassin's Creed, making it feel just as special as it did when it first started out. 
If I had to give it a score, I'd give it a 9.5 out of 10. If you enjoyed the video, then be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and share it with your friends. It helps more people find out about my videos, and I really do appreciate it. Thank you all very much for watching. Hope you guys have a great day, and keep on gaming.